the mysterious passenger. Harry fought back his yawn. He had dropped his last passenger half an hour earlier and did not see anyone near the roadside in this part of the housing estate. It was past midnight on a weekday and the roads were quiet. If I go around this estate, I will just waste my petrol. Uh, I might as well call it a day. Harry sighed as he turned his taxi around and proceeded to the nearest exit to the expressway intending to go directly home. It was then when he saw her, an old woman walking with difficulty along a dimly lit part of the road. She was carrying a bag and limping with the aid of an umbrella. Upon seeing his taxi, the woman raised her umbrella waving it feebly in a weak attempt to flag down the car. He stopped at the curbside and waited for her to let herself in. She informed Hairi her destination. Without thinking much, Hairi set the taxi's meter and they set off. It was quite a distance from where they were and he would have to travel double the distance if he were to go home in the opposite direction. However, he did not have the heart to turn down an old woman. Furthermore, the total fare would be a tidy sum which could cover his petrol for the next day. He smiled and looked at the rear view mirror and caught her eyes. The place you are going to is quite far from here, Machi. Are you meeting someone there? He asked, trying to make small talk. Yes, I'm meeting my son. He is in camp and cannot come home. I bought some mangoes for him. He loves mangoes. She said as she tapped the bag beside her. I see. He is a lucky man to have a mother who is willing to go all this way just to bring mangoes. I remused softly. The old woman smiled thinly and looked straight ahead. The silence in the car grew and Hairi turned on the radio to lighten the mood. She remained perfectly still throughout the journey and Hairi gave up all attempts at a conversation. Occasionally, he would steal glances from the rearview mirror but apart from staring at nothing, she did not appear odd to him other than having to deliver mangoes in the middle of the night, which to Hairi was just selfish of the son to demand his frail mother to do so. Soon, they exited the expressway and turned into the road leading to a military training center set deep in a wooded area. Although the road was well lit up, Hairi could not shake the feeling of uneasiness weighing down on him. The trees on either side of the road seemed to be closing in on them, but he fought the claustrophobic feeling and concentrated on driving at a comfortable speed. It was very quiet and the winding road leading to the camp seemed to go on forever. He heaved a huge sigh of relief when they came upon the camp sign. You, 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 you can stop here. The old woman suddenly said, startling Hairi, who had almost forgotten about his passenger in his eagerness to reach his destination. Here? The gate is a few meters ahead. I can stop in front of the guardhouse. No, here is good. Will you wait for me while I give him these mangoes? She asked. Tyree nodded and watched through his rearview mirror as she opened the door. She limped slowly forward and turned towards what Tyree believed 
to be a side gate. He could not see much because of a rather high bush that covered the entrance. But he assumed she was there, probably talking to the sentry on duty. Maybe the sentry on duty is a son and he just wants to eat the mangoes to pass the time, pondered Hairi. He sat in his taxi, counting the day's earnings and calculating his total bill for that week. His favorite song came on the radio and he leaned back, lost in the memories of that song, smiling to himself as he closed his eyes. He was not afraid, as he knew there would be at least one person in the guardhouse and he was not alone in the vicinity. Suddenly, he awoke with a start and looked at the clock. The old woman had been gone for 15 minutes, but it seemed like a long time to him. He drove slowly past the gate, pulled the parking gear and waited. He thought that if the woman walked out, at least the car was within sight and she could reach it quickly. He glanced at his surroundings and fought back the uneasy feeling creeping into him. His bravery earlier had dissipated and he became annoyed at having to wait for the woman and equally annoyed at her son for making his mother do this. Then a sudden tap on the passenger window startled him. Two military uniform personnel were standing outside and peered into the car. Hairi wound down the window slightly. Any problem, sir? Asked one of them. I'm waiting for the old lady. She walked in a while ago to give mangoes to her son at the guardhouse, explained Hairi. No one has walked up to the guardhouse, sir. The man said kindly. We saw your taxi from up the road just now, and when you parked in front here, we thought you might need some help. But sir, you can't park here, sir. He explained further. He shared a look with his partner and Hairi suddenly understood the unspoken words between them. So, uh, there was no woman with a bag of mangoes? Hairi still could not believe the fact that he had been duped by someone who may not even exist in the first place. Both the military personnel shook their heads grimly. Hairi thanked them and turned his taxi around. As he sped along the lonely road again, desperately looking out for the entrance of the expressway, he swore he heard from a distance the sound of a woman laughing shrilly into the night. So what do you think? Was there really an old woman with a bag of mangoes? Who did Hairi pick up?